So building and maintaining an improvement culture. I was first challenged to talk about building and maintaining a lean culture, but I've no idea what lean is, despite Anita's introduction. Um, but I want to do it for design and construction. And then I came across this lovely couplet from a poem by Machado. Walker, there is no path. The path is made by walking. So I'm not going to give you any answers today. Um, I'm going to talk about robots, automation, and prefabrication. Um, this is work in progress. But I want to set this in the context of people, and I'm been really pleased to hear people talking about people uh, today and about the planet. Um, so here's the, comp the bit about robots, automation, and um, prefabrication. Um, we've got to think about, think in terms of whole systems, um, collaboration, and culture. Because what I want to do is bring people and the planet together. Um, and my challenge to us all as we think about this conference next year is how we can look at, think about the planet in all our presentations, as well as thinking about the people and the technology. So, machines can help, but we can't rely on them. So I'm going to talk about what's learning, what's improvement, what's culture, what's leadership, couple, some case studies, and then thoughts for design and construction. As I say, this is work in progress. What's learning? It's a process of acquiring a new or modifying existing knowledge, behaviors, skills, values, or preferences. It's, it's a very messy process. When you ask people about learning, most of them think it, of it as a reasonably straight line from A to B. It isn't, as we all know. I'm sure. So it's helping people understand that learning is a messy process. And learning normally implies a fairly permanent change in behavior. So if you're not changing your behavior, you may not be learning. I find this model, which I th it, it comes from Julio Olala, but I think it's very heavily based in the work of Chris Argyris and single and double loop learning, and though that in turn is based on Gregory Bateson's work um, on deutero learning. You see something, you come up with an explanation, you want to improve it, so you take an action based on the explanation you've come up with, and then you review what you've done. So the action is the key piece there because that's what changes something. The idea of the action is to change something. So that small change that comes there is just a small change. A bigger change will happen when you start to change the explanation, change the theory that you're working with. The biggest change will come when you change yourself, change the observer, because then new theories become available to you. And a whole new set of ideas become possible, new actions. So it gets more difficult as you move down, and it gets more effective as you move to the left. Um, and people need help to find new explanations, and they need help to change themselves. Coaching is really, really important. Most people, most senior leaders have coaches. And I'm going to run out of time. Um, so what's improvement? Not all changes are improvements. Not all improvements in part of a process result in, imp an, in an improvement of the whole process. So it's a common misperception that if every step in a process improved, is improved, the overall process will improve. We have to think about the whole process. And an improvement is a change that is beneficial for the customer. So you really need to be very clear about who the customer is. What's culture? 
Most people see it as the way we do things around here. That's the colloquial way of explaining it. Ed Shine talks about a pattern of shared basic assumptions which are developed by a given group as it learns to cope with the problems of external adaptation and internal integration that's worked well enough to be considered valid and therefore is to be taught to new members of the group, the company, the organization, the project, whatever it is, as the correct way to perceive, think, and feel in relation to those problems. Now, that's quite a complex thing to do. So why is it important? Culture plays a role in personal and group decision making. It affects the way we make decisions around here. And the faster you can make good decisions, the faster you can iterate, make progress towards success. Can culture can give you competitive advantage. And you heard listening to uh, Philippe Bonav this morning, he was talking a lot about the culture of the company that he leads. And he was telling stories designed to illustrate the culture, and the videos were illustrating the culture of the company that he wants to lead. And that's a really important role for senior leaders to do, is to tell stories which help cement and change the culture in their organizations. So what's involved in culture? Lots of things. These are just some of them. They are structural elements of an organization. And those of you who are architects will know about structural, uh, architectural determinism. That the, the structure of the building determines the way you use it, move around in it, and so on. The structure of organizations affects the way we behave in organizations. So changing culture involves changing the structure of organizations. And you're trying to do that in an environment where all the structural elements are continually in flux. They're changing the whole time in response to changes in their immediate environment within the organization and to what's going on in other organizations with which the company, the organization is Relating. These are complex adaptive systems, CAS for short. What's the role of leadership? Myron Tribus um, defined it as, well, workers work in a system. The role of leaders and managers is to work on the system to improve it with the help of the workers. The role for leaders and managers is to remove the obstacles that prevent workers doing quality work. Prevent workers from improving the way that the work works. And compare that with the way things are now. Leaders tell subordinates how to work and then control them, and that leads to hierarchy. And procedures that the leaders create to save their own time creates bureaucracy. Neither of those help an improvement culture. So very quick case studies, very superficial case studies at this stage. The USS Santa Fe, a nuclear attack submarine, the leader on that submarine led by being clear about his attention, intention, sorry, his intention. He realized after they'd been at sea for about three hours because of what had happened immediately preceding his appointment as a commanding officer that he couldn't command that ship. He was not competent to command that ship. He knew what needed to happen. Other people knew how to make it happen. And that very quickly moved that submarine from having one leader with 134 followers on board to having 135 leaders on board. It moved that submarine 
from being the worst performing submarine in the whole of the US submarine fleet to being the top performing submarine in the US fleet within two years. Associated with that change in moving from command to intent, um, he moved the authority to make decisions to the person with the information. The typical way we do things is to move the information to the person we deem to have the authority. This is different. And he ensured that those with the decision authority had the skills and knowledge to use that data effectively. Very different way. Um, Favi, a French bronze foundry just outside Paris. Um, any, any of you heard of Favi before? Few of you have, great. Um, it's a company that trusts its employees. It treats all its people as equals. It has no managers. Um, staff are allowed to grow their jobs. It is a highly customer-focused factory. They make bronze casting for the automotive industry, for the health industries, all sorts of things. If a customer phones up and says, we've got a problem, somebody will get in a car, or two or three of them will get in a car, and they will drive across to Germany or Spain or wherever it is to uh, sort that out with the customer face-to-face. -face. And the staff monitor their own key metrics for themselves, and they now have 70% of the European market share. And, and they're supplying China and one or two other places as well. Um, Alcoa. When Paul O'Neill became CEO of Alcoa, he blew a few minds by saying that his focus was going to be on safety. And he went to a, a Wall Street briefing and he said, my number one priority and all I want to talk about today is safety. And a number of the fund managers and um, advisors and so on who attended his presentation went away and said, sell, sell, sell Alcoa. And later recognized that that was the biggest mistake they, make, they could make. Because within two years, Alcoa, because of the focus on safety, and on equipping people to make the workplace safer, its bottom line, sorry, for you did that. Huge transformation. Amnesty International. Some of you may have seen the report that came out um, earlier this year, because rep responding to the urgency of the situations um, that many of its clients faced, uh, senior managers made hugely um, unrealistic expectations of their, um, their teams. And within about two or three weeks, um, two people committed suicide because of the ridiculous demands that were being made on them. And that had a huge impact on the organization. Um, and that crisis has led to a significant change, which is still ongoing. So this will be an interesting one to watch. But they had the guts to publish the consultant's report on what they found out when they looked. And there are, I think there are some really, really important lessons in there. And if anyone wants the reference, um, see me afterwards, as they say. Toyota. I find this diagram really, really interesting. There's a very small span of control, and the team members, I, I find it also interesting the way it's drawn. It's drawn with the team members, the people who assemble the vehicles at the top. The role of the team leaders is to support the team members. The role of the group leaders is to support the team leaders and to support the team members if the team leaders can't sort things out for themselves. So this is about a problem solving. Yeah, this is designed to support problem solving at all levels in, in the operation of the business. So what about construction and design? In construction and design, there's a huge diversity of perspectives. Each of the professional groups involved in design and construction have their own language. It's called jargon. 
But civil engineers speak a different language from structural engineers. Yes, there are lots of overlaps and there are differences. How do we bring everyone together? I worked um, for Shell as a consultant for a number of years trying to weld together the aeromechanical engineers, the petroleum engineers, the geologists, and all the other different professional skills which came together to explore um, and produce um, hydrocarbons. And it was fascinating watching them learn each other's languages. We have nothing similar in construction yet. There's fragmentation of operations, many small companies and so on. There are personnel discontinuities. Alignment is, is hugely um, problematic. So, this is how we organize traditionally. We've got senior leaders at the top, and they're having to split their attention between the shareholders and the lenders and customers, which gets priority. The workers down here being instructed. Contrast that with what you saw in Toyota. The middle managers are there to direct, or think they're there to direct the workers. Now I'd ask you to think about this one. The customers are there being served by the workers. The workers are the people who create the value by delivering what it is that the customer wants. Um, they're making requests to middle managers, but the role of middle managers now is to support the workers, to enable the workers to make improvements. Senior leaders are there to support the middle managers and to look after the shareholders, the stakeholders, the lenders, and so on. I've no idea whether it's possible to make a model like this work, but I'd love to find out. And what about the planet? Um, there is some evidence that more collaborative approaches to design lead to more sustainable design and construction. And you'll find some evidence of that in um, integrating uh, project delivery, the book that has been mentioned a couple of times today. Can these ideas help that process, support that process? I don't know. Um, what else can you do? What more can your organization do to help us address the climate emergency that I believe we're currently in? Um, this needs further research, and if anyone wants to be involved, I'm prepared to act as a, uh, a focal point for that. Um, thank you. I have time, I think, for a question or two. I'm Zachary Dekli. I'm a research engineer at the Chair Construction 4.0. Uh, my question to Alan is about the organizational diagrams of Toyota. So apart from being upside, da upside down, is there any change with other diagrams we find in other companies? Yes, there is. The span of control is much smaller than is generally the case in construction. Um, and the, 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 the reason for, um, or the, 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 the primary role of the team leaders and managers and so on is to help the workers improve the way the work works. It's not to tell the workers what to do. The workers know what to do. They've got lots of ideas for how to improve. They're there to help them experiment and to check that any changes they propose really are improvements by collecting data and doing the test. Thank you for this answer. You also mentioned in the case study of France there that you, the company has no managers. Yes. in the slide. So why it's a good thing that they have no managers and in your scheme of Toyota production system, there is managers there. So, so I don't understand why no managers is, is a good thing because they have a role. Well, I, I, I was just reporting that they have no managers. I wasn't okay. saying it was good or bad. All right. um, okay. But it is clear from the way their bottom line has grown that they don't need them. Thank you.